All our lives, we've been told. Work hard. Achieve. Get to the next level. But sometimes, our best efforts fall short. We start to think maybe we don't have what it takes. Or maybe we do. Jesus took on the sins of the whole world. He conquered even death itself. He invites us to follow him. He wants us to trust him. And through him, through his body and blood, we are united in Jesus. And to each other. Everything we're searching for. Hail Mary, full of grace. Our hopes and our dreams. Points to the Father. Who loves us unconditionally. Who called us by name. If you knew that receiving the Eucharist would change your life and change the world, what would you do? What would you do? What would you do? Join us for the year of the Eucharist. Good morning, my friends, and welcome to the Chalice of Salvation, coming to you from the Chapel of the Holy Spirit here at St. Michael's Cathedral. I'm your Chalice of Passionist, Brother Terence Scanlon. As we celebrate the 31st Sunday in Ordinary Time, today's first reading begins with a wonderful image of the whole universe in God's eyes, seemingly like a single drop of morning dew upon the earth. The author of the Book of Wisdom looks in wonder at the way God's mercy cleanses and renews us. May God's word refreshes us like the morning dew. This week, we welcome back to our studio chapel, Father Matthew Greedy, pastor of Our Lady of the Lake Parish in Southwick as our mass presider. Jack Uris from the parish will be our music minister. Father Matthew will offer this liturgy in loving memory of Larry Mandeville, the late husband of Melinda Mandeville, a member of the Catholic Women's Club of Springfield and a longtime friend to all of us here at the Chalice of Salvation. This Mass is being offered by our Chalice Ministry. And we're honored to have Melinda along with her friends from the Catholic Women's Club in our chapel today, as well as a contingent from Our Lady of the Lake Parish community. And as we do each week, we offer our heartfelt best wishes to all our celebrating those special birthdays or anniversaries today and throughout the coming week. Special birthday shout out to our celebrant, Father Matt, whose special day is coming up on Thursday. Happy birthday, Father Matt. We also wish our loyal Chalice viewer, Ann Nicholson, a very happy 94th birthday. Ann is a parishioner of St. Mary's Parish in Longmeadow. Happy birthday to you, Ann. And a happy anniversary to Arthur and Rita Jeffroy of Chicopee as they celebrate their 65th wedding anniversary last Wednesday. The parishioners of St. Rose de Lima Parish in Chicopee were married there in 1957. And a very happy anniversary to Evelyn and Roberta Masson, parishioners of Sacred Heart Parish here in Springfield. The happy couple will be celebrating their 50th anniversary this Friday. Congratulations and best wishes to all. And friends, as always, we are mindful of those who are ill or homebound. We send our prayers to all of you who are watching this telecast from your hospital rooms or nursing homes, and all those special people who attend to your needs. We also remember and pray the names that you, our viewing community, have sent in to us for today's Book of Remembrance. May God bless these souls and all the souls of our faithful departed. We now join Jack Uris in our opening hymn of gathering as we welcome Father Matthew Greedy and together celebrate the 31st Sunday in Ordinary Time. i 
on us, oh God, he reigns from heaven above the wind. Come power and love, our God is an awesome God. Our God is an awesome God, he reigns from heaven above the wind. Come power and love, our God is an awesome God. Our God is an awesome God, he reigns from heaven above the wind. Power and love, our God is an awesome God. Our God is an awesome God. Our God is an awesome God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In a special way today, we welcome the Catholic Women's Club of Springfield as we celebrate this Chalice of Salvation Mass and also of the parishioners of Our Lady of the Lake Parish in Southwick. And we pray for all of you and for all of your needs. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father, Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, by whose gift your faithful offer you right and praiseworthy service, grant, we pray, that we may hasten without stumbling to receive the things you have promised through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. Before the Lord, the whole universe is as a grain from a balance, or a drop of morning dew come down upon the earth. But you have mercy on all, because you can do all things. And you overlook people's sins, that they may repent. For you love all things that are, and loathe nothing that you have made. For what you hated, you would not have fashioned. And how could a thing remain unless you willed it, or be preserved, had it not been called forth by you? 
but you spare all things because they are yours. O Lord and lover of souls, for your imperishable spirit is in all things. Therefore, you rebuke offenders little by little, warn them and remind them of the sins that they are committing, that they may abandon their wickedness and believe in you, O Lord. The word of the Lord. your name forever and ever. Every day will I bless you, and I will praise your name forever and ever. I will praise your name forever, my King and my God. The Lord is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and of great kindness. The Lord is good to all and compassionate towards all his works. I will praise your name forever, my King and my God. Let all your works give thanks to you, O Lord, and let your faithful ones bless you. Let them discourse of the glory of your kingdom and speak of your mind. I will praise your name forever, my King and my God. The Lord is faithful in all his words, and holy in all his works. The Lord lifts up all who are falling and raises up all who are bowed down. I will praise your name forever, my King and my God. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. Brothers and sisters, we always pray for you that our God may make you worthy of his calling and powerfully bring to fulfillment every good purpose and every effort of faith, that the name of our Lord Jesus may be glorified in you and you in him in accord with the grace of our God and the Lord Jesus Christ. We ask you, brothers and sisters, with regard to the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our assembling with him, not to be shaken out of your minds suddenly or to be alarmed, either by a spirit or by an oral statement or by a letter allegedly from us to the effect that the day of the Lord is at hand. The word of the Lord. Son, so that everyone who believes in him 
might have eternal life. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. At that time, Jesus came to Jericho and intended to pass through the town. Now, a man there named Zacchaeus, who was a chief tax collector and also a wealthy man, was seeking to see who Jesus was. But he could not see him because of the crowd, for he was short in stature. So he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore tree in order to see Jesus, who was about to pass that way. When he reached the place, Jesus looked up and said, Zacchaeus, come down quickly, for today, I must stay at your house. And he came down quickly and received him with joy. When they all saw this, they began to grumble, saying, He has gone to stay at the house of a sinner. But Zacchaeus stood there and said to the Lord, Behold half of my possessions, Lord, I shall give to the poor. And if I have extorted anything from anyone, I shall repay it four times over. And Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house, because this man too is a descendant of Abraham, for the Son of Man has come to seek and to save what was lost. The Gospel of the Lord. In the Gospel today, we hear that Zacchaeus was a tax collector and a wealthy man. He was not really the greatest role model because he was rich for a reason. And tax collecting wasn't really the highest paying job in the world. He was a wealthy man because he had cheated other people. But Zacchaeus hears about this Jesus of Nazareth and wants to learn a little bit more. So he climbs a tree. But it turns out that Jesus actually seeks him out, calling to him and telling him that he needs to stay at his house. Basically, Jesus was inviting himself over to the house of Zacchaeus. Why was Zacchaeus sitting up there looking awkward in a sycamore tree in the first place? I think it was because he was scared. Zacchaeus knew that he had some major issues. He knew that he was a person who was dishonest, greedy, and selfish and that he had done wrong, even to some of the people that were in the crowd with him. When we do something that is wrong, or when we are feeling guilty, the last thing that we like to do is to let everyone else know. The first reaction to guilt is to hide ourselves. So I think that Zacchaeus was scared and felt guilty, and therefore he decided to hide himself. But how does he respond when Jesus turns to him and says, Zacchaeus, 
get down from there. Come down from that tree. I have to go and dine in your home. He opens his heart to the invitation of Jesus. And Zacchaeus came down quickly to welcome him. He was not concerned at that point what others would think of him or what his reputation would be. Zacchaeus welcomed Jesus in and allowed his heart to be transformed. If we take a moment and really think about it, it took a lot for Zacchaeus to go from hiding in a sycamore tree to receiving Jesus to abide in his home. Christ wants to abide in you, to make you a living tabernacle. How many of us, when we hear those words, would turn away because we think that if Jesus really knew what kind of person we are or how guilty we are, he wouldn't want to abide there. He would not want to abide with us. But Jesus calls out to you and to me and asking us not to waste our life sitting in the tree of your own selfishness and sinfulness, but rather to welcome him. Jesus wants to be with us even when we are weak, even when we are in the dark places, feeling like we're about to commit those same sins once again. Jesus is there contemplating the scene and trying to show us his love and mercy. And this is a love that he has shown even from the foundations of the world, even from the very first moment of our conception. And that's pure love. And it's a love that we all have trouble understanding because we usually do not know how to show that kind of love to others. It's a kind of love that only God can show. Jesus chose to abide in Zacchaeus, not because he was rich or perfect, but because, or not also because he had a nice house or any kind of material possession, but Jesus reaches out to him Nonetheless, in Zacchaeus needed the presence of the Lord. We need to remember this fact that we are not loved because we are good, but rather we are good because we are loved. The Lord yearns to dwell in our hearts, but first we must come down out of the tree of our own sinfulness and welcome him. Do we truly wish to see Jesus? Do we truly wish to have a personal encounter with him? Or are we afraid of how he might transform us? As we receive the Lord today, aware of our own faults and failings, let us open the doors of our hearts and invite the Lord to abide within us. And then just as Zacchaeus was transformed by Christ's love, let us allow ourselves to be changed, to be fitting tabernacles, dwelling places of the Lord. Amen. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, 
of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day. In accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. God loves all life because God created all life. So we are confident that God hears us as we pray on behalf of the lives of all. Our response to the following petitions will be, Lord, hear us. For the church, that we may share Zacchaeus' enthusiasm for the opportunity to enter Jesus and respond with joy as we encounter him in the least of our brothers and sisters, let us pray to the Lord. Lord For those in authority, that they may respect the dignity of life from conception to natural death as they formulate laws and policies and make judgments regarding those laws and policies, let us pray to the Lord. For ambassadors, diplomats, and all who work in foreign service, that they may strive for understanding and patience between world leaders with the goal of peace between enemies. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord for immigrants, refugees, and all those who come to this country in desperation and with difficulty, that they may find in their new home a refuge of justice and mercy. Let us pray to the Lord. For those members of our families who struggle, for those living with depression, anxiety, addiction, cancer, heart disease, chronic illness or pain, and for those who care for them, let us pray to the Lord. We pray this day for Larry Mandeville, for whom this Mass is being offered, and for the names we now enter into our Book of Remembrance this day, including William Clark. We pray that all are in God's loving embrace let us pray to the Lord. God of love and mercy, you created all things out of love and stand willing to forgive all things out of mercy. Hear us as we cry out to you and grant our needs and the needs of our brothers and sisters according to your divine will. Through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Sing to the Lord, sing 
to him, sing to him, let us sing to Jesus. The Lord is present in this sanctuary, let us delight in the Lord. The Lord is present in his people gathered here, let us delight in the Lord. Delight in him, delight in him. Let us delight in the Lord, delight in Him, delight in Him. Let us delight in Jesus. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May these sacrificial offerings, O Lord, become for you a pure oblation and for us a holy outpouring of your mercy. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For in you we live and move and have our being. And while in this body we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit, through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. And so with all the angels we praise you, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Indeed, holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you thanks and praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it. 
for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread, when we drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O oh Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O oh Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you wish to reconcile us to yourself, Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Michael the Archangel, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis our Pope and William our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you and your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom there we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. My Jesus, I believe that you are truly present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to possess you within my soul. Since I am unable at this moment to receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as already there in my, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Let us pray. May the working of your power, O Lord, increase in us, we pray, so that renewed by these heavenly sacraments, we may be prepared by your gift for receiving what they promise through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Providence Place, owned by the Sisters of Providence, an ideal rental setting for retirees to continue their active, independent lifestyles. We have bright one and two bedroom apartments, a magnificent chapel with daily mass, restaurant style dining, and wellness and entertainment programs. Call for a tour, 413-534-9700. Mom, call me when you're not so busy. A 15-year-old Italian boy is on his way to sainthood for his research and online exhibit of Eucharistic miracles. Many of those miracles could be seen in a traveling exhibit that came to Our Lady of the Blessed Sacrament Parish in Westfield earlier this spring. With a second chance to see it this week, Steve Katonic has this report. By all accounts, Carlo Acutis was a normal, happy boy who loved playing soccer, video games, and was a natural jokester. But he also had a very spiritual side. Carlo attended Mass every day, prayed the Rosary every day, and went to adoration for hours on end. Acutis also had a great devotion to the Eucharist, often commenting that the Eucharist was his highway to heaven. His devotion inspired him to create an online Eucharistic miracles exhibit as a teenager. And he really considered Jesus just his best friend. And he wanted to share that joy of, of Christ in the Eucharist with other people. In March, Eileen Wood of Tewksbury brought the Vatican International Exhibit of Eucharistic Miracles to Our Lady of the Blessed Sacrament Parish in Westfield. Wood gave a talk on Blessed Carl Acutis and displayed the exhibit in the parish center for five days as part of its 2020 Lenten series of talks on the Eucharist. Eleven years ago, Wood was looking for a way to celebrate the fifth year anniversary of her parish when she stumbled upon the exhibit at a church in Ohio while attending her daughter's college graduation. When Wood found out that the exhibit's creator was a young boy from Milan, Italy, she became fascinated by his story. Well, he was actually a bit of a computer geek. When he was like eight or nine, he got a, a university level book on computers. He taught himself computer programming. Carlo saw that priests in his native country weren't celebrating mass as reverently as they should have and wondered why soccer stadiums were filled to capacity while churches were empty. He wanted to change that. At age 11, Acutis started to investigate Eucharistic miracles that have occurred throughout history. For three years, he researched and took pictures of churches that bore witness to the miracles. Armed with his savvy computer skills, Acutis devised an entire photographic website that traced the history. The website eventually led to the Eucharistic Miracles exhibit. Anyone can download the entire online exhibit, but Wood duplicated it on a high-speed printer. It took many rolls and lots of ink, but Wood printed all of the 187 color posters while her husband Chris built the 32 wooden stands. For the past decade, Wood, along with Chris and Joe Fazio, has been on the road traveling with the exhibit, setting it up and lending it to parishes and chapels across New England. 
The last time the exhibit appeared in the Springfield Diocese was three years ago at St. Elizabeth of Hungary Parish in North Adams. The 150 documented miracles have occurred in over 20 countries, mainly in Europe. Italy has the most, 29, followed by France and Spain, also in double figures. Some countries like Portugal, India, Colombia, and Croatia have just one miracle like the tiny Reunion Island in the Indian Ocean. The miracles are for all different reasons. Sometimes it's because somebody doubted. Sometimes it's because somebody did something, you know, sinful or whatever. You know, I mean, there's different. Other times it, w it had nothing to do with that. There was a, a tsunami, right? And God protected the people. They brought the Eucharist out and it stopped the waves from coming. Other times it would be some kind of healing for somebody. A recent Pew study found that many Catholics believe the Eucharist is symbolic. Acutists hope that by educating people, they would believe that Jesus is present, body and blood, in the Eucharist. The host, it does look like bread, and it does taste like bread. In the chalice, right, it looks like wine. It tastes like wine. So God knows that we need sometimes a little bit of extra to help our faith along. There are also stories of people who have lived for years on the Eucharist alone, and various saints over the ages who have experienced Eucharistic miracles. Animals also recognize Jesus' presence in the Eucharist. St. Anthony challenged a non-believer, saying his starving mule would choose the Eucharist before real food. And the animal, even though he's starving, he's weak, he can barely walk, he bypasses the food and he went over and he knelt down before the Blessed Sacrament. So even animals are recognizing the truth of it. One of the most documented miracles occurred in Lanciano, Italy in 750 AD. A monk had doubts about the presence of Christ in the Eucharist and prayed for guidance. At the moment of consecration, the host turned into living heart tissue and the wine into physical blood. The blood coagulated into five drops, but when weighed... If you take any one drop against any four drops, they always balance out. If you take any two drops against any three drops, they always balance out. It doesn't matter what combination. Well, like, how is that possible? Miraculously, I guess, you know, each drop of blood is fully Christ, body, blood, and soul, and divinity. After centuries of being on display in the church and exposed to the elements, host samples were examined scientifically in the 1970s. It was discovered that the sample was human heart tissue. The blood type was AB, like that found on the Shroud of Turin, and the blood, when liquefied, retains the chemical properties of freshly shed blood. All the miracles are documented by the local bishop and approved by the Vatican. The exhibit was virtually shut down during the pandemic. And it has been out, but not that much, as much as I'd like over the first 10 years. In the last six months, it's been out like nonstop. It's just, it, it lives in my van. A lot of it, I think, is partly because of, the, um, of Cardinal Sean declaring the year of the Eucharist, but also because Blessed Carlo was beatified, and people are starting to know who he is. Carlo Acutis was only 15 and a half when he died in 2006 after a two-week bout with leukemia. On October 10th, 2020, Acutis became the first millennial to be beatified by Pope Francis. Yeah, Carlo Acutis is very much a role model for young people today. When you look at him and you see pictures of him as a young person, he dresses like our youth today. He, he very much uh, looks and acts like them. And I think, you know, our youth need good role models. Wood plans to update the exhibit with 28 new posters to reflect more recent miracles. A Spanish version will be available soon. Wood, who works full-time in the family business, plans to keep showing the exhibit in as many places as she has time for. Worldwide, the exhibit has appeared in more than 10,000 parishes. But I just feel like this is like the ministry that God's calling us to do. I mean, I think it's really important because if people had a greater devotion to the Blessed Sacrament, it would change their life. Wood, who hopes ultimately the exhibit will deepen people's faith, simply goes where the Holy Spirit leads. In Westfield, I'm Steve Kiltonic. Thanks, Steve. In the Newman Catholic Center on the campus of the University of Massachusetts in Amherst is currently presenting this exhibit of Eucharistic miracles along with a first-class relic of the Blessed Carlos Acutis. The display will be in the main floor classroom of the Newman Center at 472 North Pleasant Street in Amherst today through November 1st from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. I would also like to express my sincere thanks to Father Matthew Greedy for celebrating our liturgy today. And again, we wish him a very happy birthday this coming week. And thank you to his parishioners who joined us for today's celebration. And we also are grateful for the presence of the members 
of the Catholic Women's Club of Springfield in our studio chapel. Our thanks as well to Jack Uris for providing our music ministry. We are always blessed by his spirited presence with us here on Chalice. And friends, asking you to join us again next week at the same time for your Chalice of Salvation, your spiritual connection, as we welcome Bishop William Byrne as our Mass Presider, as we celebrate the 32nd Sunday in Ordinary Time and begin our All Souls Remembrance. You'll still have time to submit your loved one's names as this remembrance runs throughout the entire month of November, taking the place of our Book of Remembrance. Call our viewer phone line at 452-0643. Kindly leave your name and mailing address and we'll get the submission form out to you. That number again, friends, is 452-0643. In the name of all of us here at Chalice, we thank you always for your prayerful and financial support to our ministry. And in return, we ask our loving God to bless all those you hold close and dear. Love to all. See you next Sunday morning. God bless. Thank you.